Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about quite a few races. I want to start off with uh, E3 we had the other day, which has slowly but surely become one of my favorite races of the season. It almost delivers every time in recent years and this edition was uh, no exception. We had Bob Youngles who attacked with uh, 60 kilometers to go and for a while it looked like he could uh, repeat what he did earlier this season when he also attacked from far out on a Carpet Classic but he was eventually reeled in by a group of favorites which included Alberto Bettiol, Greg van Avermaet, uh, Wout van Aert and uh, Bob Youngles teammate Zenek Stieber and because De Koenig once again played it basically tactically perfect, Stieber went on to win because with uh, about three kilometers to go, they took turns uh, in attacking and attacking first Stieber, then Jungels, then Stieber again. And then with one kilometer to go, Jungels just went to the front, put up a high tempo, had Van Avermaet uh, behind him and Van Avermaet was basically the leader guy for Stieber. Uh, I want to mention also a great race by Mark Hirschi. He is a really promising rider. Most of us uh, thought he would become more of an Ardennes type of uh, rider. But he seems to get fairly well over cobbles as well, so who knows? Maybe he can become the next Cancellara for the Swiss. I don't know, but certainly a prospect worth following. Uh, some big names were not in the top 10, not at the front, missed the, missed the, uh, yeah, they were at the wrong time, at the wrong moment and uh, missed the cut. Those names were Nicky Terpstra, the winner from last year, but also Peter Sagan, uh, Christoph was missing. Um, Degenkolb was missing, and so yeah, quite a few names you would expect, especially with now the Tour of Flanders right around the corner, uh, just a week away, and De Koenig is firing on all cylinders, uh, I think there is one World Tour one day race they have not won this season, everything else some of their riders uh, took it, uh, be it Viviani, Alaphilippe, Jungels, uh, and Stieber. Great racing by the team as a whole. And now it's up to other teams to, to step up. Uh, Van Avermaet, it looked in the early season uh, as if CCC would have quite great support for him. Van Aert is showing that he's at least there or thereabouts. Betty all stepped up after Van Marke once again was nowhere to be seen. Uh, he has become a little bit unlucky over the last few years and if Betty all continues riding the way he does for his team then I honestly believe that his time as a set in stone captain for the Cobbles can and should be questioned because Van Marke, as strong as he sometimes is or seems, he just has not delivered yet. He has never won the big one, a monument, what most of us thought when he was younger and crashes, bad positioning, mechanicals, sometimes his own fault, sometimes not, like uh, what can you do about mechanicals? But still, Van Marke, his results are not what the team is paying for. And if Betiol is getting these results now for team education first, then maybe they should focus on the young Italian, who I think has, uh, has a breakout year in 2019. Really great uh, stuff from him so far. Really, really interesting rider to follow. And yeah, that's for now for the Cobble Classics. Oh uh, wait, uh, tomorrow we have Ren Wibbelkamp, which will basically, probably, be another 
race for the sprinters. Yes, it is a couple of classics, but over the years, most of the time, it is just a bunch finish. Last year we had uh, Sagan in front of Viviani, who wants revenge this time around. Who knows, maybe he can get it. Um, Gaviria will also be present. And yeah, that should be quite an interesting sprint, but the racing beforehand often enough is not the most spectacular. We shall see, because tomorrow we have quite a few interesting other races. Uh, we also have the last stage of Catalonia and we also have uh, the last stage uh, of the great race Settimana Internazionale Coppi e Batali. Uh, I hope I pronounced that one right. <laughs> uh, so all those take place tomorrow. And speaking of Catalonia, um, I haven't uploaded a video about the stage race in Spain, mainly because, like I said, uh, my vacation ended and I had to go to my day job again. And over the last uh, over the last three days, I worked for more than thirty two hours, so I was often quite a bit tired when I got home uh, after doing ten or eleven hours at work. And yeah, I just I just couldn't at the end. Um, but yeah. We stopped after stage three, I guess, if I remember correctly. So I made a few notes. Um, I checked the races afterwards. And uh, Lopez, Miguel Angel Lopez, uh, he did a really, really great ride on stage four, which got him not only the stage victory, but also netted him the overall lead because Thomas de Gent, other than what I kind of hope for, uh, to be honest. He lost the lead, he lost eight minutes on the day. Um, I thought if he survives Falter 2000, he could go all the way. Well, it turned out he could not. Uh, and now it is Lopez in the lead because the next uh, two stages were not ones for the overall uh, classification guys or the general classification guys so stage five was won by max schachmann who i talked a lot about in my previous videos that i would like to see him well and uh, now he finally pulled it off really promising rider really versatile rider also uh, there are not many people who are as versatile as him i think in the current peloton there is uh, kwiatkowski ala philippe bob Youngles. You have to name Moscon, Valverde, but other than those, I think you soon have to name also Mark Schachmann, who has a great time trial, who gets over hills. Uh, he has shown he can sprint a little bit. So yeah, um, promising rider, great move from him going away from De Koenig because he wanted more opportunities for himself and not to ride for uh, Gilbert and Alaphilippe, or Bob Youngles for that matter, uh, in the Ardennes and wanted his uh, own chances. Now he has to share the leadership with uh, Peter Sagan, but they are entirely different riders because I think Schachmann is more of a attack late guy, like uh, Bob Youngles did last year in uh, Liege Bastani Liege. And Sagan was the guy waiting for a reduced bunch finish, so Bora Hansburg have, have now two cards to play in the Ardennes because Sagan wanted to keep his shape this year round and also try his luck in those races. But usually he ends his uh, spring campaign after the cobbled races are over, so that would mean for the future that Schachmann would be the unquestioned leader for that team. Uh, he is a German rider for a German team, so it makes sense for them um, if he is their star rider for those races. So yeah, uh, and then the stage today was won by Michael Matthews, who already took his second stage win in Spain. All by it, minor competition, to be fair, but nonetheless, uh, Sunweb 
had a really hard uh, start to the year. They did not win many races, uh, to be quite frank. But now it's picking up slowly but surely. Uh, Matthews got them a few stage wins and uh, I guess he wouldn't care that uh, well, what the competition was because a win is a win. Uh, especially in World Tour stage races, exposure for the sponsor, all that stuff. Happy for him that he gets his uh, season going. We have to see what he can do at the Tour de France if uh, Peter Sagan will be back in green or if uh, Michael Matthews can take it once again. But yeah, that brings me to the last stage we have uh, in Barcelona tomorrow. So currently in the lead is, like I said, Miguel Angel Lopez. But there are a handful of guys who are under a minute. I think uh, best chances should have uh, Yates, Bernal and Quintana who are about 14 to 30 seconds down, I think. Um, the, uh, those three guys could maybe take it from him, but other than that, I don't see, uh, I don't see anyone taking the overall victory from Miguel Angel Lopez, which would be another victory for Astana. They and De Koenig, they fight it out this year for the most wins of the year. Both of them are, I think, already at 20 now, uh, or slightly above, but right around 20, which is crazy. We are still in March and two teams have already taken a combined 40 victories. That's just uh, crazy. It's basically Whatever race you watch, one team or the other takes the race. Uh, always a blue team. It's either dark blue or light blue, but yeah, the blue teams win everything at the moment. Um, so uh, I want to finish this video with talking about a race I mentioned earlier, a smaller stage race in Italy. The, and I have to take my sheet again for the name. Uh, the Settimana Internazionale Copie e Battali. Um, I want to talk about this smaller race because Mikel Landa is back in action and he actually took his first victory in over a year. His last one was a stage at Tirreno in 2018, so early March. And now in late March, a year later, he finally takes a victory again, which will boost his confidence ahead of his home race, which uh, we also will cover. But yeah, it uh, wasn't meant to be so far to, to give him the overall lead because another promising rider, Lucas Hamilton, could stay with him uh, when he attacked and when he won the, uh, won the stage. Uh, um, and since then, Lucas Hamilton has led the way for the uh, past few days, was the man in the lead. And Lucas Hamilton is a really great prospect because just two years ago, he was second at the Baby Giro. He was fourth at Tour de l'Avenir. Uh, he won the Tour of Alsace. So quite a few good results. Um, Last year he got pretty much uh, used to riding in the World Tour, but this year he's, he stepped up. He's uh, only 23, I think. And uh, I think he has a bright future ahead of him. He's a promising stage, uh, stage racer. Another good climber from uh, Australia. They. They got some climbers over the past few years. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, these Australians, they always have their, their few guys who are really, really good in the mountains. And maybe the upcoming star for the future is actually Lucas Hamilton. And yeah, that's it for me for today. I'm out.